At home, in this video, we're going to talk about energy during forms. The initial impetus for this particular video is watching a test or watching a demonstration, watching a seminar, and watching how the students or whoever's you know, going through the practices, how they are actually performing the form. So there's going to be a difference between learning the techniques of a form, kind of like again, copying a move, versus actually instantiating the form, kind of like showing what that form is supposed to do. So let's talk about a little bit about that difference and how you can kind of start to push yourself into a higher level of training. I'm gonna take the introduction of a form. Again, I don't wanna show the full form because I might get me in trouble with the feds, right, so the federation, uh, but I wanna show you the beginning of the form and kind of give you an idea about what I mean, right? Uh, so uh, I'll give you a few examples, right? and you can kind of see the difference among them, right? Uh, so example one is, again, assuming that you, uh, dear viewer, are the instructor and you're watching me do a form. So we're here, so chumbi, chariot, or chariot, sorry, uh, chumbi, and sijok. Yeah! So exhibit A, right? So nothing, as far as I know, uh, I wasn't watching myself, um, there's nothing necessarily like wrong about the form, at least as far as I know the form to be. Um, so it's like, okay, like you hit all the moves, uh, most of walk, most of the stances are walking stances, so it's not really that hard to get into them. But like, okay, like you, you are okay, right? However, um, if I were in combat, for example, I may not die, right? But there's a certain lack of something. So let me show you a couple more um, examples and hopefully you kind of see the difference. Example two. So I dripped. Chimmy! And Sijok. Number two. Number two is usually what I see from practitioners that could be students, it could be masters, who first of all know they're being watched, right? Uh, I'm also guilty of that. If I feel like no one's watching, I, I do exhibit A a little bit more, exhibit one. Um, however, uh, like again, nothing wrong with it. I have a little more, you know, oomph in it. Uh, however, it's not, it still is lacking that combat, right? So yes, again, everything was you know technically correct, had a little more oomph into it. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, what's the phrase? I was gonna say poo-poo you. Uh, that's obviously not gonna be the right one. I wouldn't like look down upon you if you did B, but there's gonna be a few other ways I want you to be more aware of. So let's take a look at number three. Uh, Tripped, chubby, and sea jump. dial back a little bit. Example four. Uh, this is going to be a different style of energy, but let's keep uh, playing with it, right? So, chariot. Chumbi. And sijok. We're going to do a video in the future about the idea of young versus older uh, energy styles. However, the last two, right, are closer to what I would actually want from um, students. So students probably more with uh, example three, and masters, especially more seasoned masters, more like four, uh, for a couple of reasons, right? So uh, with three, uh, again, in the, in the <laughs> future video of young versus old style, the idea of the energy kind of like pushing out, right? So like energy generation of, you know, intent, etc. Versus the fourth style is sort of on the older side, where it's going to be more, again, honing in, again, same amount of energy, 
So again, pushing in towards a specific point. So especially for younger, younger folk, right? Younger uh, masters, younger students, um, I would re highly recommend the third one that we did, um, which is a lot more just like raw energy. Um, and as you do that for a couple of years, like more than a couple of years, ideally doing that for a decade plus, um, then start to kind of play with the more refined kind of energy work like that. Uh, but uh, that's the kind of idea that I like to play with. This also brings up another aspect that I want all masters to be aware of, as well as all students, and that is having intentionality as you perform anything. So especially, right, so because we're swordsmen, right, a sword is a, you know, a weapon, it is something that is, you know, designed to, you know, cease phenomenological consciousness, right? So there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that, so you always have to have that intentionality, right? Uh, now that said, I usually don't see um, when I go to seminars, for example, I don't really see like children like frogging with live blades, you know, swinging about them. Um, but I do see a sense of uh, a disconnect between the understanding of like this as a life ceaser, right, uh, versus it being like a tool, for example. Um, so, for example, like as you go through a form, the moment the seal is broken, the intent has to be to preserve your life, right? So even if you're using a wooden sword, the moment you make the assumed action of breaking that seal, really think about like, okay, like in a form, for example, the idea is well, I'm in this position, I am the soldier receiving the information. While well, I'm in this position, I am <laughs> contemplating my mortality as I face the opponent in front of me. The moment this breaks, it has to be only about preservation. Right, when I'm here, I see something coming in. I have to draw out quickly enough to strike the sword out of the way or pressure them enough for me to come back around, strike their wrist, and then going in immediately for the life ceaser, right? Going in for that headshot and then um, <laughs> top bounce, right? And then clearing back your distance as they fall face off against a new one. So one aspect that I'd like for you to think about is learn the application of all of the forms, right? So if you're learning a form, obviously first, like just mimic the moves, you kind of know what comes where, what comes where, what comes where, that still felt weird. Um, but anyway, so kind of doing the moves in the correct order, right, so you kind of can you know, mimic it. But once you have that for a while, really start to digest it. So once you understand the intent behind it, then you can attune your intent as you go through a form to match the form. Hopefully that makes sense. So, um, so this is also going to be true for, uh, again, not just sword, because um, yes, sword is a very life-ceasing or preserving kind of mentality, but it's also true for open hand, right? Uh, so, for example, if we're going to do, I'm trying to remember my, fav my more favorite ones, uh, so we're in your less ready position, right? So just like in open hand, you know, cheer out, you know, receiving information, chumbi, you're here, you're kind of getting that energy ready. And the moment you get out of this position, it is about life preservation, right? So if someone is grabbing me, I have to break out of it and then go straight for their jugular, pushing in, right? If someone's behind me, I'm gonna block, potentially wrap my fingers around their bicep as I ride up and go through their throat. So it's that kind of idea that you have to really have um, an understanding of your form for you to have that proper intent uh, as you perform it. Uh, that was trying to move, allegedly, <laughs> as, as I was going through it. Um, but this can also be in non-martial things, right? Uh, so even if you're like, do a semi-silly example, as you're driving, right? So like understanding, like, okay, when I do the acceleration, should do this kind of thing. I should have to intent if I'm really gonna be moving around this person, right? Is there a safer alternative? All that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so for example, when you turn on your car, suddenly it is your responsibility not to hit anyone, <laughs> right? Because if you're in your car, it's not on, someone hits you, that's a little bit different. Uh, versus like the moment you have that and you have that responsibility, your intent has to be completely on the action you're doing, right? I know this is kind of a little bit harder with, uh, you know, especially people with, um, you know, um, 
attention, right? So things that are a little bit hard to maintain attention, uh, which is why martial arts is a good way for you to learn to focus all of that. So hopefully that was not too long-winded for most of you, but the main idea is what I want you to do is think about the intent and really think about how you are, one way to do it is the ki, right? So the, or the ki up if you're Korean, uh, which I should be saying ki up. Um, yeah, so like learning how to actually properly key up, right, is going to be helping you to do that, but also all the other fun things I mentioned. Uh, so, uh, as you train at home, right, or train in your, in your dojang studio, wherever you're doing, um, make sure you are in a safe spot, so, that, so it's not like small children frolicking, for example. Um, but as you go through your form, ideally again with a metal sword, because I'm biased, uh, but as you go through your form with anything, like a stick, open-handed, whatever, Make sure you have that intentionality, right? So always have that, you know, um, understanding of space. Again, this is allegedly your sacred space of training, right? So you want to make sure you dedicate your time properly to that, so you can build the good vibes there. But with that, uh, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training. Hey, don't.